So, I speak all the time about men and women. As you know, I'm a marriage coach and a um, rabbi that try to help uh, couples. Um, and it is, you know, uh, one of the most challenging thing, I think. And especially today, we're in a generation, and we all know that. I'm just repeating it because it's, it's just we have to really realize what's happening. We're in a generation where every holy structure, every foundation, every true love is being threatened and, uh, and is misunderstood and is not taught. We have to understand that since the moment we are born, our goal is to learn to be one with someone else. It is the hardest thing in the world. Why do you think you have to wait, be with someone for 120 years? Okay, we're married a few years and good, now I live my life. No, your entire life till 120, the day you die, is with the help, not just with the help, <coughs> with the only help you can get is the one of your spouse. She, the, the Arizal says, she comes back. Your wife comes back as Gilgul only for you. She doesn't need to come back. She's your Ezer Kenegdo. She's here, your, she's your helper opposite you. She's a gift given by God to come and challenge you. To challenge you, therefore, to go in the most difficult places that you want, don't want to go, to deal with the things that you don't want to go, to deal with all the crap that is in you as a man, all the ego, all the selfishness, all the whatever it is, habits that are not 100% pure and good. Now, the, uh, 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 your wife can come in many different forms. Some more religious, some less religious, some a bit more traditional, someone, some very, you know, demanding some less demanding everybody is gonna have a different wife but we have to understand your wife is your soul too is a, par a part of you when you are confronting your wife all the problems she has to deal with oh she's very impatient oh she's very uh, you know uh, focused on the material oh she's always so focused this is your problem Meaning you learning to deal with her issue and learning to support her, embrace her, understand her is what's going to change you. It's not that, oh, she has those problems, I try to try to fix her and I have my problem and she tries to fix me. Yes, a woman in her own way has to learn to fix herself and it doesn't mean she has no problem at all. But that's not your job. You, you're not here to try to fix your wife, say, you know, you should be more like that, you should be more like that. The truth, the woman changed the most when we show true love. We're here. We have to understand that relationships come before religion. We have to understand that being married is not as important as being, uh, sorry, being married is more important in a way as being religious. Why, why I'm saying that? I'm not saying that, the, God forbid, right, don't take my words wrong, that we should forget about religion and all that. But we understand that my whole purpose of existence is to be one with God. The only way I can be one with God is by married. It says like that in Chazal, Nadav and Avihu, the great tzaddikim, they were like, whoa. And what? They died because they were not married. They couldn't approach God. We understand the only way to approach God is to be married. So let's understand, you can do all the mitzvot in the world, but if you can't be a good married person, husband, you're going to fail in heaven. So let's put the priority right. And it's not natural to our understanding. Our understanding, oh, God, God is first, da, 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 then do what my wife works. The only certain moment where we're going to choose religion over the wife, if the wife refused to have any intimacy at all, or if she's really, really abusive or something like that. But that's it. Not the only really strong exception. Otherwise, your marriage comes before uh, your religion with, with, with for God, because your marriage is what's going to lead you to God. Again, you have to use, you know, my words carefully. You need to have a rabbi that guides you in that direction. You don't just throw religion away. But the, the way to reach God is your wife. 
So let's understand something, go, let's go deeper into it. We understand that the wife, men, since we're born, we not taught about women. The only thing we're taught about women is what we see on the outside, um, you know, in the movies or in the magazines or whatever women once did or that. We don't understand women. You have to know. No matter how smart you are, you think you understand women. You might grasp a bit more some women more than others. But men doesn't get women. And our whole job as a man is to try to understand the wife, is to try to work, to become empathic and to be patient and to work on our own character traits so that she is happy with what we do. That's what you have to focus on. Is she happy with, as, with what we do? Now, your wife is, the, is your crown. You have to understand. Imagine you have to look at yourself like that. And it's Mashal Bachazal. You imagine you're a farmer. And you're getting married to a queen. Your wife is a queen. You might see it or not see it. It doesn't matter. Your wife is your queen. She is the one that makes you king. How do I know that? Because God says the same thing. Only with the Iqlal Israel being a queen is Hashem going to be able to be the king of the world. And Hashem relies on us. So we understand, but Hashem does everything he, as a good husband to us. It's us who are being the bad wife, so to speak. But here we're changing things around, right? If we are true good husband, and that's why we're focusing on Hashem, so to speak. What Hashem does, what Hashem does. Because if you act like Hashem, you become the perfect husband. How would Hashem speak to your wife? How would Hashem spend time with your wife? How would Hashem give love to your wife? That's how you have to think. So, if God was in my shoes, what would He do? What do you think? Think about that. So, let, but let's understand something. Okay? We need a PhD in understand what a woman is, but understand ourselves, what we are. We men are filled with ego and with selfish things. And if we don't feel respected by the woman, we, uh, it breaks our honor, we don't feel loved, and we feel angry and upset. We have to break our ego. That's the purpose of life, is to break your ego. Because when you break your ego, you can truly be in love with your wife. Because a woman is not here to respect. She has a mitzvah to honor you because it might be difficult. So that's, that's her mitzvah. But she's here to challenge your ego. It says with Rashi, why, why God is not good for men to be alone? Because he's going to think he's God. He's going to think he's the best. He's going to think he's the man. And that's why Rashi said that's why you need a woman to break him apart. You're nothing. You're Afa Wefer, you're Avram, like dust. David Amelech, a worm. Moshe Rabbeinu, nothing. Yeah. What are you? Ma'ani. Right? This is what you are. You're nothing. You only become something thanks to your wife. And, and, and the challenge that we don't see that is not obvious because you go to work or you, you know, uh, take care of the house or you take care of the bills or you take care of the whatever it is that you take care of. But it says all oh, the bracha comes from the woman. I don't understand. She does anything. She stays home. She takes. She washes the clothes or whatever. She takes care of the kids. I don't see that. Yeah, you don't see that. But that's what you have to recognize. Because the level of emuna. You need to have emuna in your wife. That she is the keli. She's the source of the bracha in your home. Your bracha to connection to Hashem. So it looks like you do. You're awesome. You know, I go work and I do mitzvot and all that, and I do so much and I'm productive and I do many jobs and excellent. Without your wife, you're just a lonely little piece of nothing, because you won't have children. You won't work on your character traits. You won't have your life getting built with a house, with a family, with an heritage, with a place where God can come. Because the, 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 the place where Hashem comes, you need to have a bite, a real bite. Oh, how can you have a, a bite without a woman? Oh, interesting, the woman is called a bite. So you understand, that is an illusion, that we're so great. You need the woman. Again, I don't want to stand like a feminist. Women have tremendous greatness and potential, but his potential is completely dependent upon the woman. 
Let's remember, the Gemara says, a woman, well, a man without a woman, is, has no Torah, has no bracha, has no, uh, has no parnasa, has no uh, wisdom. I mean, like, it's, it's crazy. You're nothing, basically, without your wife. And, and, and we have to be humble enough to recognize that and to learn to treat our wife no matter what, no matter how she treats you, good. And we know the sages in the Gemara that, 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 uh, that the meaning of the, the rabbi, in the, in, I forgot his name, the Tana in the Gemara that uh, was abused by his wife and his term him say, how, why do you let her treat you like that? She, because at least she saves me from Gehinom. She gives me children, meaning she saves me from Gehinom. She prevents me from being egoistic. She enables me to work, refine myself, my character traits, and to grow and to be someone. Because without her, it's better to be someone, an abusive woman. Okay, there's a limit to the abuse, but let's understand here, right? To be with a woman who is not respecting you well than no woman. Because then you become humble. Then you work on yourself. Then you try to be, you work on yourself, become better, and you have children, and you can have a house and connect to Hashem. We have to say it's fundamental. If we don't get it, we, 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 we're going to suffer. It is the hardest work in the world. The hardest. And that's why nobody, to, nobody wants to get married today. It's too hard. It's too painful. Facing yourself in the mirror about all the crap. Your wife is going to tell you all the crap, what's wrong with you. And you have to work at it. Don't focus on her wrong thing. You're not her therapist. You're not here to help her unless she, you help her first and unless she asks you for help. So we have to know how to do it. We have to be authentic, uh, authentic, attentive, empathy. A woman is emotions. She wants you to feel her. Let me listen to you. Let me hear you. Let me be with you. Don't try to fix her. She doesn't want fixing. She wants you to hear and to feel with her. It's the hardest thing for a man. A man likes to fix, 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 fix. No, just listen to me. Just understand me. Just feel what I'm feeling. And it's not going to make sense. It's not going to make sense. Not always. Now, sometimes it doesn't mean you should not use your smartness. But you have to do it in a very subtle and refined way without taking out her emotional part and her, um, you know, without hurting her and, and, and showing that you really understand what she's saying and you relate to what she's saying. But it's very hard. Men we don't like to do that. So this is the challenge of marriage. Look at your wife as darkness. Your wife is darkness in the sense that she's going to bring you the darkness in her life. But darkness in Kabbalah is greater than the light. Why? Because the darkness is what enables you to go to a light higher than the original light. Oh, you're a good man. Yeah, you're light. You're a good man. Oh, but I know, aren't you here to grow and to become even greater? Yeah? Okay, go in the darkness. And your wife puts you in the darkness. So it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be always, you know, you know a, a vacation a trip of love, uh, romantic. No, 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 no. It's, it takes work. And one of the reasons I actually heard from my Rebbe, he says that the reason why the first night when, when a husband and wife get married and she's a virgin, um, right away, she dam besula, she uh, loses the first blood, and right away he has to be separated, nida. What the first time you finally have been waiting to be with your wife, and the f first of all, the first relations is not pleasurable that much, especially for the wife. So it's, it's complicated, it's stressful, all that. And then after that, you have to wait again, need that time. Because wh why that it sounds not natural. And the whole point, say, you understand the relationship and relation you're going to have with your wife takes work. It takes time. It's difficult. It's not just, it's everything's good. So, as men, we really have to work understanding that it appears like darkness, but it hides in it a higher light than it is, than, 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 than your own light. The Zohar says the woman is the soul, and you're the body, okay? So, she, she's panimi, she's, the, she's hidden. You cannot see really the greatness of your wife. It's hidden, that's why in the end of time, we're going to see the power of the woman. We are always saved by women. We have to understand that. You have a good woman, 
she brings you in the right direction um, so that's very important we, Zoravdinovich from Israel says like that from he quotes the Arizal the Arizal Akadosh says like that that in all of history there's only going to be one couple there's only one couple that is perfect perfect um, perfect couple role model couple you know who that is? Moshiach and his wife Moshiach and his wife I mean, that means that until now we, knew, we know even Moshe Rabbeinu had problem with Sipora right and there's the whole thing of Miriam Lashonara so even the greatest man the most humble man there was a shtickle problem so what's happening it means that what is the fixation what is the Arizal what uh, what's Arizal, Arizal saying what is Moshiach going to teach us the Messiah the Messiah and I mean, in a way it contradicts all of Christianity because the Messiah needs to be married and he's going to see, show that marriage is the most powerful thing in the world. How to be truly married, how to truly love one's wife, and how to truly love one's husband. And when we're going to see that, it's going to fix the whole world. Why? Because if every couple in the world learns to love each other with respect, with love, with understanding, with getting you, all that, then those couples are going to make holy homes and holy children and balanced and harmonious uh, um, uh, society and the whole world is going to be beautiful but because we don't have good simple relationship with our spouses we destroy the world that's where it comes from and we know that from Adam and Eve Adam sinned because Eve was alone because there was a problem at the root so we have to fix all that we have to fix that relationship problem and now we're going back to the beginning of time fixing the original sin which is a man needs to treat his wife with understanding don't let her alone she cannot feel alone if you, she makes, if you make her feel alone and not understood and not um, that you're not there for her the snake is going to come the insect is going to come all the you know, all the people are going to come and, and, and the forces of evil want to attach themselves to her because she, they see, right? What, what you say about the angels, they saw the, the, nef the Nephilim, the angels saw the son of, of the woman, the son of man, and they, they saw the woman of man and they, they, got, they got lust for it because the woman has a tremendous power that, that has in them. They can bring life to the world. They have tremendous power and the giants, the Nephilim, whatever it is, those fallen angels got married with the women of men. Not, and it was not like female angels that got married to men, no, it's angels that got married to women because they understood there's a tremendous power in the woman. But we don't acknowledge it yet completely. We have to learn to acknowledge it and um, we have to break our ego and humble ourselves and treat your wife if you know your wife is your crown that when you come in front of a Kadosh Baruch in front of Hashem he says I don't care about your mitzvot I don't care about you know all the good you have done unless you have done good to your wife the Chavetz Chaim says that your chesed is nothing if you have no chesed home so reflect upon that this is the essence this is Judaism 101 this is the real thing this is what men need to be careful about so Spend time understanding how you work, what upsets you. But more important, I mean, and how a woman, man works, but spend time learning how a woman works. A woman needs, they all say the same thing. They want to, you to feel what they feel. They want you to understand them. They don't want, they don't want you to share, uh, uh, um, to, to, to be attractive to you. They want you to show them that you want them, that you're attracted to them, that you want to be with them, that you're thinking of them. And don't say anything that hurts their feeling. You don't know how to cook well, you don't know how to dress well, you don't know how to do this well, you don't know how to do this well, you're not made for that. Not one thing negative. Not one thing negative. Who do you think you are? You want her to tell you all your bad stuff? That's not how it works. That's not how you're going to fix her. That's going to she the more you're gonna take care of her and love her and see her greatness and learn to understand her on her level 
the more you're gonna understand, the more she's gonna love you and make you into a king. So, this is the most important, my friend, in our generation, in today's, in the couples. So, no matter what, that's, that's the thing. If your wife is not happy, ask her why she's not happy. And women stay silent because they're afraid to hurt you. I know because they tell me when they come to speak to me. They don't want to say, but ask her, how did I hurt you? How did I hurt your feeling? Tell me, let, let, tell me how I can fix it. And we men, we always think we're right. We always think we're right because here it seems right. Here it seems right. But God doesn't want here only. God wants the heart. Your head without your heart is garbage. Call the Rahman Abba Li Baba. Everything that says in Gemara, everything that God wants is the heart. Your prayer is garbage without your heart. Your mitzvot is garbage without your heart. Your good actions are garbage without your heart. A good heart, Pekka Abba says, is the best trait. And how do you get that good heart? How do you wear that? Your wife. Your wife is the, is the, wife is the heart. She's the pumping, she's the emotional center of command. She's that, that place where if you understand emotions and how not to hurt anyone, she's, she's, the, she's the training manual. She's the, the, the rehab for true love and emotions. So you got to spend time in rehab. You got to spend time with your wife. And then right now in quarantine, where you spend time stuck with your wife, are you able to give her more love? Does she feel more understood? Does she feel more loved? Does she feel that you understand her emotionally more? Do you spend time listening to her? Are you patient enough with her? Are you spending the time that she wants you to spend with her? Again, right? This, this, this is strange. And it's extremely hard. It's the hardest thing in the world, guys. It's the hardest thing in the world. But this is your purpose. Everything that is hard means it's the real thing. So it takes a lifetime, but the earlier you know, the more, the greater you're going to be. So break your ego, become humble, and keep feeding, keep, keep giving the good what she needs, what she wants, what she like, and do as much and go to the extreme to be able to give uh, her what she needs. She needs a car, she needs an extra uh, cl clothing, she wants um, a jewelry, Go even a little bit in debt, you even for that a little bit. Now I'm not like crazy, but you borrow, do what she wants. Okay, there are limits. Okay, you can discuss with your rabbi if you're not sure if that's okay. But do the maximum. Go beyond because her happiness is your blessing. Her being treated like a queen doesn't matter how physically you look. Right, guys, it's very easy. It's like, I don't need anything. I, you know, or, I mean, this is materialistic, guys. But I, I don't need anything. It's just about God. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. It's all about your wife. It's all about uh, uh, learning to be realistic. A man is not from a realistic. He has dreams and do this and do that and fly all over the world and potential. Millions of seeds. The man is millions of seeds, right? Women say, no, no, no. We got, we got to build something here. You're not being realistic. Take one seed and we plant it in the egg and then we make a baby and it takes nine months. So don't talk about all those dreams. Now a woman has to learn, of course, to be subtle and allow her, the husband to dream, but bring him down to reality. And the woman is more practical, is more realistic down to earth. Again, this is the female and male power. Sometimes it's exchange in a couple. So everybody's different, but in general, this is, the most um, common format or uh, way that a couple works. So it's okay if your wife looks materialistic and she wants physical things and uh, because her soul is expressed through her body and she's here to please you, to want to look good, she needs to feel good about herself. The more, understand that the more you make her feel good about herself, the more she's going to love you. The more she's going to want to change and do things for you too. But it has to be the man who starts. The focus, try, try you know, I, I did that sometimes. This week, I'm going to be the best husband ever. And you don't let anything, you're going to be tested. All that. This week, do everything she wants. I never say no. Everything I do, you're going to see it's going to be a different week. 
I can promise, but in most cases, it's gonna be an incredible week and you're gonna see changes little by little. Now, that's one week. Imagine you do that for a whole month. She's the happiest woman in the world. The greatest compliment you can have in the world is your wife saying, I'm the happiest woman in the world. That's, that should be on your wall. That should be your vision. This is your mission, life mission. Your wife saying, I'm the happiest wife in the world. Now, if you're able to achieve that, it doesn't matter how religious and how yeah, it's a dick and mitzvot and anything great and smart you are, you made it. You made it to heaven, guaranteed, because it takes tremendous work. And everything is going to get better. Your relationship with Hashem and all that, that's part of it anyway. So let's try as men. You know, I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. This is, this is the men's job. This is why we are here, guys. We understand God and the Jewish people is like husband and wife. That's the highest level. Then when he took Adam, so we were separated from God, right? And then Adam got separated from his wife. Why do you think that is? Because if we don't understand that we're two parts of the same thing, how are we going to understand that we and God are the same, from, from the same uh, soul, so to speak? We are like soulmate. And if I don't understand how to be one with my spouse, I will not understand how to be one with Hashem. It will be like an illusion. So may we all be able to learn about ourselves, to learn about our spouse, understand what a woman truly is, spend your entire life trying to make her happy and God willing you'll get to Olam Abba and you'll be the luckiest man, luckiest guy in the world because God is going to come to you and say what did you do? Actually he's not going to come to you, he's going to come to your wife and come, how did he do? Say, awesome, say Olam Abba, right there, champion. So may we all become champion men and make our spouse and wife happy because this is what the world needs today. This is what our fight is today. This is what the mission is in the world. This is what Moshiach needs to see. And God willing, uh, God will bring